So if you're going to put the right rate in the right place, you need some kind of spatially intensive diagnosis. And this is what I had in mind when I started working on remote sensing. And I think um, <coughs> it worked. Pardon me, it works. Uh, but there's some nuances. Uh, in my research of diagnosing where to put no more nitrogen, yield has had some predictive ability, but it's between 2 and 20 percent of the variability in nitrogen need. So in general, where there's more yield, more nitrogen was needed, but it really didn't do a very good job. Maximum 20 percent of the variability was explained by that. Soil nitrate, uh, sometimes in zones, sometimes in large sets of small plot experiments, we we're up in the 17 to 25 percent range, so that's decent, but it's sure a lot of work to do anything where you're doing variable rate based on that. Uh, soil and quick test, we had 0 to 18, soil conductivity, only had one study where we did that, it was 8. Color was 53 to 77 percent. It really stood out as being much more reliable in diagnosing where you need more and where you need less. And so <clears throat> I think this has application in a whole range of crops. This has application in a number of different technological approaches. <clears throat> but really, I think it's definitely, if you want to be accurate, it is, as far as we know now, the way to go. Uh, my experience is with corn, cotton, and wheat. And I feel like it's pretty good with all of those. Um, I've got lots of experience with corn, a moderate amount with cotton, and less with wheat. But um, we're still working on that. Um, and I'm pretty sure it would work with other small grains like rice and barley, uh, potatoes. I suspect grass and trees would work just fine, too. It's all the same physiology that when the crop, whatever it is, doesn't have enough nitrogen, it shows up as uh, a lighter green color or a yellow color. Now, of course, with any of these crops, you need to know your crop, and you need to know if there's anything else that's going to make it uh, light green or yellow. And the answer with corn in the Midwest is 98% of the time, if it's light green or yellow, it's due to a nitrogen issue. Um, and the other 2% is probably sulfur and potassium. Cotton and wheat, um, again, I'm going to say that in humid regions, most of the time, it's going to be nitrogen. So I'm really going to focus on corn. That does not mean that there are not excellent ways to apply these approaches to other crops. But I see a big economic, economic opportunity with remote sensing. Um, remote sensing can be done uh, with normal resolution when corn's waist high up until tassel. But people don't generally do that on purpose. You know, you've got the high clearance. How do you get an applicator through corn when it's past waist high? But the images are going to have a lot of soil background noise uh, before that point. We have solved that with ultra high resolution aerial photos. And we did it on corn that was 12 inches tall and got a pretty good answer. I'll show you that in a minute. But you have to discard all the soil pixels. And that's how you can get good information. Uh, but it's really not a very practical process. And it's really going to be very difficult, even with ultra high resolution images, to beat ground-based sensors. If you've got a ground machine, you're planning an application, you're going through there, the ground-based sensors are going to be hard to beat. But I'll show you quickly that example of doing it with small corn. Step one, you take the raw photo, um, and you create polygons. And you can see a strip through there that's been fertilized with a high rate. That's our reference strip. We know what color the corn should be then. And we're comparing to that. That's our yardstick. Um, we take out two of the rows because we were only using four rows for yield analysis, take that out of the image. Then we do the plant selection process. In this case, we used all pixels with green greater than red. And here in the unfertilized corn, you can see there's a lot of black showing through between the plants. That's where the soil background was and has been removed. In the high nitrogen rate corn, uh, it's less black showing through because the plants are bigger and darker. And then we're um, combining the comparison of the unfertilized to the highly fertilized with a calibration that we had done earlier. And we get a map of predicted nitrogen rates for that field. <clears throat> and if we, we also had six N rates all through this field. It was like that field, other field I showed you earlier. And we're able to calculate for every place that there's a, um, a rectangle here what the optimal N rate was. And it's color coded similar to earlier. And you can see it wasn't a perfect match by any means. But 
uh, the real optimal end rate, which is the bottom figure, was definitely much higher in the east half of the field, and that was what we predicted from the photo. And it was lower in the west half of the field, which we also predicted from the photo. So this is doable, even with not fully canopied crops, but the obstacles are pretty great, and the competition is pretty stiff. And that's what I'm showing here is uh, we've been working with these sensors that are on applicators, uh, and they look straight down at the crop, and that's how most people are using them. And these are some demos we did where we just temporarily installed the sensor, temporarily put a cab in the computer, and it would send a signal to the controller about what rate to use. And in this case, there's a ball valve back here that's opening and closing how much and hydrous ammonia goes through uh, and into the soil. And this system uses the same principle. Dark corn doesn't need as much nitrogen. Light corn needs more because the soil's not giving it as much. Um, and it does it uh, real time, second by second in the field. So when you're in this situation, if you're looking at remote sensing, you need clear weather. If you've got high, even clouds, you can maybe get a plane under it and get a good image. But the sensors can be used in almost any weather, so advantage to sensors. And with remote sensing, you've got some kind of a processing delay. With crop sensors, it's immediate. It's like every second you're getting a new recommendation. Advantage sensors again. Um, you've got interference from the soil background in remote sensing. And it depends on how much canopy you've got, but that's an issue. Uh, you could put the proximal sensors or the ground-based sensors close to the plants and take care of that quite a bit. And so in all these cases, if you're planning to go into the field with a vehicle, uh, the crop sensors are a good fit, and it's going to be hard to beat with remote sensing. So where does remote sensing have an advantage? The biggest answer, in my opinion, the unplanned nitrogen application. You're, you're not planning to take a machine in there. Uh, you've applied your nitrogen, but it may have been lost. And we'll talk more about that. So you're not sure about whether to send an applicator. You've got a decision point. If you send an applicator with ground-based sensors, and it turns out you didn't need it, you spent a lot of money and, uh, and lost time that could have perhaps been very valuable with treating another field that needed it. The remote sensing can survey large areas rapidly. Uh, the way I break it down, in my mind, step one is to decide whether you need rescue nitrogen, and that means whether it will be profitable. And step two is to decide how much to apply. And those are the two products we've developed based on remote sensing. Um, the other place that remote sensing has an advantage if you're putting the nitrogen application in irrigation water, uh, you're not planning to drive a machine through the field that would carry the ground level sensors, and then you've got another place where you can do the diagnosis with remote sensing, and that probably is the best way to get it done. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to actually give examples of this today. <clears throat> so um, here's another picture of a field with some problems. And I'm estimating right now that we've had about 500 million bushels of lost corn yield due to nitrogen loss, nitrogen deficiency, each year for the past four years in the Midwestern US. So that's 500 million bushels four years in a row. That's 2 billion bushels total. That's about $10 billion at today's prices. And so I think the money is out there to do something better than what we've been doing. And remote sensing can be a part of that. 